All right, for the last day of tutorial week, aw, um, I'm going to cover lighting, and lighting is probably my favorite part uh, of working with SFM. I love to play with the lighting to see how simple effects I could give, and I work best off of uh, seeing examples, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. And I like the lighting in this in this little picture, so I was going to work with this a little bit. Um, and I'm not just going to show you SFM, I'm going to show you a little bit in Photoshop too, at least for pictures, and you could do the sun, sun the sun. Uh, same in Premiere and in After Effects or some of those other programs um, to, to get similar effects. But uh, for this picture, uh, there's a lot of lights used, a uh, total of eight uh, to get the effect that I want. If I shut off all those lights, you notice the scene kind of gets a little bit dreary then. Um, the sun's still back there, that's part of the map again, but everything else is just kind of bland that doesn't really fit. Um, I've, or, I'm going to delete these lights. Um, all but the sun. I already showed how to make the sun. If you need to know how to do that, um, check the description. You'll have a link to the tutorial on how to do that. But if I delete all but the sun here, the sun is doing quite a bit to this scene. But everything else just kind of feels out of place. Yeah, it's light in the grass, but it's not really giving dash of color. And the trees are kind of a little bland too. So let's go through and we'll fix this up to, uh, to make this work a little better. Now, there's three types of lighting you're going to want to remember. Um, that's rim, reflective, and ambient. Um, I don't know if those are right names for them, that's what I call them. So first what we're going to do is rim light. And a rim light is a really simple concept. It's basically just giving an outline using a light. So I'm going to grab this light, like I showed before, take it over the camera here. And you can see up here, I'm going to keep this little preview open here so that you can see uh, what, the, what it's looking like here. I want to just give an outline to dash here. So I'll take this light behind. I'm going to get low because I want to aim up. I don't want to have the grass uh, taken in that light either. And we're going to go right about here. You can see that I'm getting some of that reflective reflection there, just that rim light. I'm probably going to want a little bit more in the head there, so we'll move. Let's see if we can move that out a little bit. There, that should work. So now the color is not really going to work here. And I didn't change anything on this light intensity, anything yet. Um, just the base because when you're playing like this, you don't really need to change too much. Um, so the color though isn't really matching with the background here, so let's just change that, uh, make it a little bit more yellow here. Uh, and that should work. And I'm going to turn on the brightness because I think it's a little bit too much. Okay, so what this is doing is it's giving a, uh, a little bit more definition um, to uh, to Rainbow's face here, uh, and it helps it pull out from the background. Without it, uh, it's not the the face isn't um, standing out. It's not being pulled. It's kind of blending a little bit more with the background. But with this, you're getting it looking like the sun's actually hitting the face a little bit more, even if the angle isn't actually correct from the picture, from your perspective, it is. But that's just covering the face. There's still other things like what about the ear? What about some of the hair here? You might have to create more than one rim light. Um, I, for this picture, I think I did three. So I'm going to copy that light and paste because I already did the light the one time. Why create it again? So we're going to move it over here. I'm going to do this one for the ear. All right, we're just going to move it to where we're getting good light. Uh, a good rim light on the ear here. Okay. So, all right, that should work there. Just a little bit of light there. Um, and on the other one, I had one for the hair, but I'm going to keep this the same here because I think that was looking pretty good. Uh, the Now, the one other thing here is you'll notice the face, uh, you're getting that yellow here, but the face is still looking like blue, like it's hitting with being hit with a white light. That's still probably not what we're wanting to do here. That doesn't look natural. So this one I say is uh, when I talked about reflective light. Um, the reflective light is going to be like the light reflecting off of some of the surfaces here. It'll still be from the general direction of the sun, but it's going to give a little bit of a um, a little bit more color to the face here, and it's going to be not near as harsh as the rim. So again, we're just going to paste that same light that we had from before, and I'm just going to move this around. So that it's hit like it's hitting dash from the side of the face here. Um, I'm going to turn off shadows here so that it's not hitting the uh, the hair there. Reading it's reflective, it should be. It's not coming from a single direction. There we go. And all right, that should work. And then we're going to decrease the intensity by quite a bit. 
because all we're going to want to do is have that light coming in and being like it's reflecting a little bit into her face there. Um, it's not going to be yellow enough, I think, for the, what we're looking for here. So let's try changing that up a little bit more here. Yeah, that should be a little better. All right, so now that's looking a little better there. And I'm going to run it through here quick. Um, so let me move the light a bit here. There. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Now the, the actually color looks like the environment's reflecting the light to her. Without it, you're just getting that blue bland light. So you could, right, right now, I, the dash itself could be called finished. Like the lighting is done there. The one, a couple of things, and uh, that you could do though is these trees. Um, just with a simple, simple addition of a couple more lights here. I'm gonna paste that light back in here. I'm gonna go and actually add some lights to the trees. So I'm gonna go back to this tree and make it actually so that the the sun is hitting them. So let's make sure I'm gonna turn off the shadows on that again. Okay, and. See if we can tip up the brightness a little bit here. Now, trees act a little bit weird. Uh, I might have to have shadows on here. Yeah, be, uh, because they like to light up completely. But let us zoom in a little bit. Uh, these branches love to get in the way. Up the field of views. Let's just play around with it here until we get something that works. Okay, that should work. Decrease the intensity here. Okay, now it actually looks like the tree is being hit by the sun coming in here. Uh, now we can repeat this process for, for every tree, but for the most part, um, you're going to get that effect that you want. Um, uh, let me put that back here. Uh, by giving a little bit more realistic lighting to the background objects. It's not just your subject that's important, it's the background too. Um, so. I'm not going to actually export this. I'm going to take an original one that I had before too, uh, and put it in Photoshop here. And this is the one that I actually had originally saved. Um, and there's a couple things you can do to actually improve e uh, images like this. One of the more most important ones here um, is playing around with your levels. If you go under um, Image and Adjustments, and I'm using um, Adobe Photoshop, uh, the Creative Suite one, uh, so it's just the newest version. But uh, this should be work with just about any version. I'm going to go to Levels here. And you're going to get a little like uh, rounded graph here. This is basically your light intensities. And what you want to do is you want to try to get these end bars to fit the majority of the lighting in it, the majority of this these uh, this black hump. Um, so I'm going to move the black a little bit to get here. I'm going to move the white in to about here, so that it's now fitting in the majority here. And that what that's doing is that it's fitting. Uh, the darkest and the lightest sections it's, it's balancing them out a little better um, this little middle one will be kind of like you say your contrast a little bit since this is supposed to be an evening scene I want higher contrast so I'm going to drag a little bit to the right here and all right so and that should be good enough for the effect here and to show the difference between it um, it, it adds a, a, quite a bit to the scene. Uh, you can see that things are a lot more yellow, and it's uh, the contrast between light and dark. There's a lot more of it there. Um, other little things you can do, um, especially for something like this, is you can add a, a vignette. I think that's how you say it. But uh, under filter, and I think on some of the older versions, it has it in one of these menus here. But uh, it's under lens correction. And what you can do is play around with the, the vignette here. So I'm going to put that up. And what this is going to do is it's going to add a little bit of brown, uh, black circles, little borders to it, your pictures. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit here. Being that the sun's bright in the middle, I want it to get darker on the edges. So we'll see that's okay. And now you see this, that darkness coming up on the edges. Um, another thing you can do and this one can take a little time, but it, again, nice benefit is adding a little bit extra contrast. See these trees? Um, you're, they're a little bit too bright in the back. You can easily uh, just add uh, a little bit of extra depth to your pictures by just creating a little bit of artificial um, shading here. So I'm just, I'm just making a selection here on a separate layer, and I'm just going to... Uh, use a black brush here and just kind of create a little bit of darker shading on the tree here. Now if you, once you remove that selection, it's going to be harsh there. I'm just going to throw 
uh, a blur on it and that should fix it up. It's not actually blurring the picture, just the shading that I did. So I'm going to do OK. I'm going to make sure to move that to, so it's a better position. OK. I'll back that up. All right, and let's, uh, let's lighten that up a little bit. All right. So with that small change now, the tree looks a lot more realistic. A lot, but it's like it's lighted a lot better with the scenery. So uh, you can put a lot of time into pictures uh, to make them look a lot better. And it, this, this, a lot of this doesn't just go with pictures, though. Um, you can do the rim lighting and the uh, and the regular lighting in video as well. Um, the difficulty in that is you might have to animate the light a little bit. So I'm gonna open up. Uh, the, the the follow equestria video I did a while back and turn off audio the this scene has a lot of lights um, the Sun has two and then there's I think I counted 12 total for this entire scene to get the the correct lighting around this entire rim here and the there's that uh, because the Sun's bright I had the rim pull up a little bit more to cover the face but I actually have one of the lights animated here and that's this one here when at this point because of the churn in the face I had to move the actual light for the rim um, let me, let me uh, get my work camera back here so what the reason I did that was because if you look from this angle actually I might have to do this with the camera yeah um, you still have the rim when the face moves but if say that for this entire thing I didn't actually move that camera when this then that head turns it's now dark there, you lost the rim light um, so doing some of the or an, doing some lighting while animating um, can be a little more difficult and tricky but trying to hide uh, hide trying to hide some of the movements of the lights uh, does really come in handy um, and that scene turned out pretty well, I thought, for the lighting, other than some of my model errors up here. But, uh, and it, it add, uh, if I were to just have done this with one light, um, I mean, this whole scene would have been um, pretty bland here. Let me turn off here. This was just the sunlight. Um, and it, it lost a lot of that effect. So, um, at the end of this video here, I'm going to put up a bunch of pictures I'm going to have rendered from me turning off some of the lights and then turning them back on to kind of show the effects that uh, just playing around with the lights can give. So just remember it's um, for, your, for your models there uh, to have, there's three, three lights that you're going to have to worry about. Um, it's that rim light for the edge of the model, uh, some of the reflective light that might be coming around and the ambient light being the, the, actual, um, the actual light from the scene. Uh, if it's a nighttime scene, you probably have low ambient light. If it's a daytime scene, you might have very high ambient light. Um, but there's no standard for some of the lighting. Um, it's If you have fireplaces, maybe you're going to have a lot of a, uh, smoother of a room light, a lot more bland. But um, Or if it's a setting sun, you're gonna, or in this case here, you're going to have a much brighter version. Just start throwing lights around. And I mean, it doesn't hurt just to... Uh, um, Throwing down, move it around, and see what the effect gives. You never know what, what uh, how it'll turn out. But uh, the, as you'll see some of the pictures at the end here, lighting can make a big difference. It can change up the picture quite a bit. So, um, but that that does uh, that actually comes to the end of tutorial week. I'll definitely be coming up with quite a bit more. But I hope some of these more uh, basic ones here were helpful for people. Uh, if you have any other ideas for some, uh, I. I don't mind hearing some, hearing some. I probably have about four or five ideas in my head here, and uh, we'll have them out with time. So I hope uh, I hope you enjoy these, and good luck with uh, all your endeavors in SFM.